Hey, what's up everybody? Wes here. Thanks for tuning in for another video. With fall fast approaching here in western North Carolina, I decided to finally tackle this backyard fire pit idea made out of nothing more than cinder blocks and these large concrete blocks you see here and just a little bit of angle iron. And looking at the prices of the fire pits at Lowe's, they went up to $110. And you can build something like this for your very own in your backyard for right at $300. That's all the block, the angle iron, everything included. So the very first step after you pick out your area that you want to place the fire pit is to go ahead and get your first course of cinder blocks down. And I actually had to dig down a little bit for each one, starting at the lowest point just to make sure that everything was gonna sit nice and level. And I did that with nothing more than just a little hand shovel here for the garden. But this is a very crucial step. You wanna make sure everything is as super level as you can get it, and just make sure everything is as squared as you can get it. And ideally, you'd make some sort of a concrete base for something like this, but I went ahead and took the gamble of setting it up directly on the ground. So I will report back and let you know if it settles or shifts over time, or if that's something I would have done differently. And then we're just gonna continue this design as we go up. You're gonna be using a half cinder block, at the very first course and then it's going to end on a half cinder block on this second row and then we'll just build it up alternating it back and forth so the third row our half cinder block is going to wind up here on the other side and we're just going to continue building up as high as you want your fire pit to actually go for my design i'm going to going four courses high and then i'm going to go ahead and lay out the angle iron that we also picked up from lowe's so you're going to need two pieces of this angle iron these are four foot sections Ideally, they'd be cut to length, but the next size up was six footers. So this four foot section will work to create a trough for our final row. And then this is the picture of the angle iron that I purchased. It's got a little bit of thickness to it. So I was concerned about that offsetting the next row. I'll show you how I compensated for that here in the next shot. But first we have to address the issue that there's a notch here that needs to be cut out in order for the next brick to be able to lay the right way. So we're going to actually have to pull out a angle grinder or some other form of cutting wheel to get that cut off. And now you'll see here we've got it set up here where we can just lay our next brick on. In order to make this cut I was fortunate enough to have access to a angle grinder and I just used some simple little metal cut off wheels. Um, they're very inexpensive and I just used one of the other blocks that I used for the build to hold it down while I made the cut. Also, I picked up a pack of these thicker washers that I used to compensate the gap here that the angle iron is going to create just to make sure that this whole course is setting as evenly as possible. So I've kind of got these under each block just like you see here. But just a heads up, after I laid this whole course down, I noticed here when I came around toward this other angle iron meets, there was actually a gap in the brick here. So it wasn't actually scooting nice and flush up against it like I would have preferred. So as you're making your initial cuts, go ahead and actually cut this one on the back side as well. So you're technically making two cuts on that one piece of angle iron. And that's going to allow your next course to sit very flush and keep everything nice and square. And so now we have our main firebox built. You see here how everything's going to be kind of set up structurally. But if you notice here, I've got just a little bit of an overhang here on the top on both sides. And the reason that is, is because I technically didn't have it sitting perfectly square from the get-go. I had it as square as I thought I could get it, but this part here needs to inch out just a little. And that one just to do the same thing, uh, but not by very much. So just pay attention to that. So next up, we're going to cap this entire course with some 2-inch thick cinder block. And this is actually going to take 10 pieces to complete the top under this design. And it's just going to kind of seal up the base a little bit more, kind of get it ready for the next level, which is going to be adding in the 4-inch thick um, concrete block so we can get everything built up and then go ahead and start to create our chimney stack. And what we did here was just pick up some of the 4-inch block, again, from the hardware store. And then we're going to actually overlap those just a little bit to kind of inset those away from the main firebox. So you can see the difference in thickness here, the 2 inch to the 4 inch. And we've kind of got these not sitting completely halfway over, but just kind of over a few inches each block. And then that's going to create a little bit of an overhang. So it's going to also start to narrow down our firebox and then help to create the stack as we move forward. And these corner pieces are going to be more supported because they're touching two blocks. These ones here in the middle uh, on both sides are going to be a little more likely to fall in just because they don't have any weight on top of them yet. So if you push too far or get them overhanging too far, they're going to fall in. But once you get your next row going or your next course, overlap those joints and that's going to make everything nice and secure. And I would recommend going at least three high just to make it as strong as possible. And just a quick tip on getting these blocks to your house. If you have a truck and you order them as pickup from Lowe's, they'll actually load them onto the back, which makes it a lot easier getting them around. 
And we went ahead and did a little test fire here. A lot of people say these cinder blocks are going to explode or crack. They may do something crazy over time. If they do, I'll report back and let you know. Uh, but this thing's already drawing pretty good, even though it doesn't technically have a chimney. So I'm super happy with the effect it's got. It looks like it's pulling air in and coming right out the top. So I feel very confident with this design. We're going to keep moving forward. After everything cooled off, we went ahead and continued making our three courses here, making sure to overlap um, each joint to make it as strong as possible. And you can see here our opening that we've created. And honestly, I think this would be good enough. This is going to be pretty good airflow, but I did decide to step it down just a little bit more. So basically, you're going to inch every block in just a little bit to create a little bit of an overhang. And then what you're going to wind up with under this design is a hole that's the size of two of these cinder blocks. Uh, if you were to put two in the middle, they would fit in there theoretically. And this is the part of the build where I don't recommend doing this. I'll show you what I actually wound up doing in the end. But I wound up stepping this in a little further and just wind up using five bricks here in this type of a pattern to kind of narrow it up uh, just a little bit more. And what it did was further constrict it to where it made it harder for the smoke to get out, even though it looked nice. I had it built up and I thought that this was going to be my final design. Um, it looks pretty neat having all the different step-ins, but I think what ultimately happened was it just choked the fire down too much. I tested it that night, and even though the smoke was just billowing straight out of the hole, it was just too constricted for that fire, and the smoke started to come out of the cracks of the chimney anywhere it could to get out. I was coming out the front, so it was just a huge smoke bomb, so I definitely don't recommend doing that. In the end, what I did wind up sticking with was this design right here. I think it still looks pretty good, but basically the third tier on this fireplace, uh, we just kept it all the same and just built it straight up. And so this is the design that had the uh, slot on the top that had enough for two bricks, so that's going to be plenty of airflow. And it wound up being six bricks for each course. So you could build that up as high as you want, um, as low as you want. Um, you could do something decorative on the top, put a rain cap in if you like. Um, but here's what it kind of looks like from the inside. It just kind of steps down a couple of times. And you can see here that's plenty enough room for air to be flowing up and through. And it actually seems to work really well. I've not had a ton of fires in this pit up until now. But the ones that I have uh, put in here have actually drawn really well. You can see here it's just kind of pulling air through the front and then going right out the top. Um, this was some nice clean dry wood so i always recommend using seasoned wood if possible um, that way it's not going to smoke um, by default uh, green wood is just going to smoke more than anything that's dry anyways uh, it's really just about how you build your fires uh, making sure that you don't have this thing constricted too much like i did earlier in the video but if you enjoyed this i hope you'll click like definitely subscribe if you have any questions about the build Feel free to leave those in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to everyone as soon as possible. But in the meantime, I really appreciate you tuning in, and I hope to see you next time. All right, peace.